Good day, everyone, and welcome to Aussie Tech Heads, episode 644, I think. It's been another week. I've been away. I forgot what's going on. It's 8th of August, 2019. I'm your host, Glenn Goodman. Welcome to another week of news and views and whatnot. Some fun and frivolity. Eh? Some pull your socks up and get stuck into it. Uh, we're joined this week by Jordan. We'll get to him in a second. And you can reach him at Jordan at AussieTechHeads.com.au. You can reach me at Glenn at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Uh, but more importantly, we are brought to you by Start New Company. Register your company with ASIC Online, uh, Australia's easiest and fastest online company registration site. All constitution, company certificate and other documents available for download after registration immediately. And also special discount, discount codes. How good's that for ATH listeners? If you're in the market for a company... Well, then go to uh, startnewcompany.com.au, whack in the code ATH20, and you get a $20 discount. So couldn't ask for better than that, could you? Also, ATHwebhosting.com.au, servers operate SSD drive, SSL certificates, register domains, install WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal, and Aussie Byte, ATH19 for 33% off clock faces in the Fitbit app gallery. Thank you, Jace. All right, we've got uh, Aussie Tech Radio on the TuneIn radio platform. Uh, so AussieTechRadio.com for instructions and what you need to and it tells you what you need to know. Back to back, twenty four seven tech podcast from Australia. And I chucked another uh, an old one in there actually. That uh, look, it's been it's it's an old podcast. I haven't played it before, but it's from uh, Steve, one of the guys I know up here. Uh, used to, it was used to called uh, Coding by Numbers, but they changed it to Six Degrees of something or other but it's on the round it's on the run around anyway so uh go and have a listen to that aussietechradio.com and also you can get us on the facebook.com forward slash aussie tech and youtube.com forward slash aussie tech as well and the show notes are always at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast i did a broken links uh search on the podcast website the other day and because i could put the show notes up there from i don't know from uh, I've got records of show notes from about episode 60 or 54 or something, so about a year in. I've got about uh, three and a half thousand broken links, <laughs> so not getting too much Google juice from them. But uh, we'll, uh, I've got to try and figure something out because what's been what's happened is look, I'll bring Jordan in so he can join in so we can all say good day. Hey, Jordan, how you going? I'm here, mate. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. I'm just going to run away with the whole show myself. <laughs> you can do that if you like, that's fine. That's all right. I'm happy with that. You're a good show, usually. Yeah, oh, I meant to say uh, thanks for Jace for stepping in last week too. So uh, I couldn't make it last week for school commitments. Uh, but yep, so I think Will was crooked. So thanks, Jace, for, for doing he, what you he could. He did by himself. He did. He did. He did. He did the whole show by himself. He did. It was a short show. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you should have given me a ring. I probably would have gone on and helped him out. You know, I think it might have been a bit of a last minute thing uh, Will pulled out because I think he was crook. And uh, I spoke to Will through the week, and he does, still sounds crook. So I uh, hope you're feeling better, Will. Uh, now, what was I saying? I forgot. I was talking. I was going to start on a, off on a story. Um, oh yeah, broken links. That's right. And yeah, so what's happened? Now, I downloaded a plugin for the WordPress, and it's like a broken link plugin. And what went through the whole thing, found all the broken links. But the good thing about it is like you can just go uh, like select all. So I could select you know majority of them and just go unlink. Nice, you know, straight away bulk, bulk unlink, get rid of the problem. But they put this little feature in that you can, when you edit it, it will suggest another link. And it, and it, and if it exists, if that page exists on the archive.org, it'll give it to you. So I've been, I've been going through going, change it to archive, change to archive, to each one. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to the three and a half thousand of them, but we'll see how we go. Might be easier to get in and do a database search and just change them all in one hit. No, well, you've got to go out and get the link from the archive.org. So it's not all the same link. So it's not just changing the domain name part of the link, it's changing... Well, that's something I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Yes, I, I don't know. You you might have be onto something there. But, well, yeah, I'll see how I get... But you're still going to have... Yeah, you still have broken ones, but then I suppose you could bulk undelete them, unlink them, well, so... If it's only the domain name has changed, you could probably do a, a data, database search and replace. Mm, yeah. All right, uh, look, let's uh, move on in it's to, look, a bit of a uh, couple of stories this week about these, you know, the tech listening to you and all this sort of stuff. Uh, so I've got this one here, Microsoft workers listen to some translated Skype calls. Now that sounds pretty, uh, 
serious, I think. Like, I don't, you think that Skype's pretty safe? You know, you think, oh, yes, it's not a telephone. So, you know, you can't, can it be bugged? Well, well, maybe not bugged by the government, but bugged by Microsoft listening in. So supposedly it's, uh, you know, it's contained to str- translated Skype calls, but, you know, what the hell? Um, makes me a bit uneasy. What about you, Jordan? Makes you uneasy? Oh, I don't like anybody listening in on anything. Well, no, well, neither do I. No, like if you, if no, that's right. You want a private conversation, even if I'm talking about how to bake cookies. You know, like you just don't want. You know, you don't. Know, you don't want some little dude listening in. Some little no. dude that lives in the in the basements. No. But according to a tech site motherboard, some contractors for Microsoft review such conversations to check the quality of them, and this is why they're doing it. Uh, the fact that humans may listen into calls is not explicitly stated in Skype's terms and conditions. And Microsoft's come out and said it had users' permissions to collect and process their data. So a bit of a, you know, one hand, one side saying well, it's not in the terms, and the other side saying yes, it is. Hello. It also said that human contractors could hear voice commands spoken to Cortana, which is the Microsoft voice assistant. Now, the practice of human contractors assessing recordings of customers apparently using text products has faced increasing scrutiny lately. So last week, Apple and Google decided to suspend their use of human contractors for reviewing voice recordings made by themselves or made by Google and the relative people. Uh, Virtual assistants must be. Yeah, so a few days later over in Luxembourg, their data protection watchdog said that it had opened discussions with Amazon about Alexa. So, you know, what is going on? Uh, yeah, no good. No good at all. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, you would think that, you know, on a Skype call, you'd be pretty private, but, um, you know. Like... Look, it makes you wonder about all of those video chat calls. I mean, who's listening to our calls, right? Who's listening to us? Well, there's some Facebook people that are listening, but, you know, who's hmm. listening to our private Zoom conversation? Well, that's right. Yeah. And how many. All of them, Facebook, Facebook uh, what do you call it? Facebook uh, Messenger and, and FaceTime on the Apple and. It's all there. Mm. How many There's to- no proof that they aren't or well, that they are. How many times have you bagged the, the carrier that you were using, say uh, Zoom, Skype, Google Hangouts when it was there, So and um, you know you go, oh, geez, this is shit, and then all of a sudden, a couple of minutes later, your connection gets lost. <laughs> you go, oh, you'd swear blind someone was you know listening in, wouldn't you, sometimes? For years, two people have been blaming you know, even phone services for tapping our phones and all sorts of things. So. Mm. Yeah, you just don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah. You just always got to be careful. My old man used to say to me, just don't put anything on the internet or anything that you don't want. Mm. Well, that's right. You're not hurt, you know. You just got to be yeah. smart about it. Don't put anything up there that you wouldn't say to your mother. No. So if you, you know, if you're one of these people that tells your mother off. Well, there you go. That's what you can still Do follow my rules. <laughs> Do it in private. Yeah, yeah. We'll tell you. Ma- she tells you off and makes you look stupid. No one knows about it. Tell your mother off in private. Um, oh, I got a guess what I got through the week. Have a guess. Uh, a new haircut? You'll never guess. No, I got no, <laughs> no. I got a uh, very desk. You know, one of those things. Have you heard of those? Very desk. So, I've heard of them. I think. Someone's yeah. So you, you so you, today. So this is, so you sit it. I can't show you because uh, everything's on it now. But it's uh, I put your your keyboard. You sit it on the desk on your desk, and it's got your keyboard, your monitors, and everything. And then you can l- slip two handles like like um, uh, depress them or whatever you want to call. It, activate the two handles, and the whole desk stand like rises up, so you can stand at it. Oh yeah. So you can just stand yeah, up. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I should do a show from the standing you position. Do some squats while you're standing. Well, well, I could. Yeah, I could. Like while I'm waiting for the for the for to come on. <laughs> waiting for him to win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd have legs like tree trunks. <laughs> but they did win last week, so that was good. Yeah, um, there you go. Yeah. So yeah. So that's no good. Um, look, I've got another story about things listening to you I think later on but we'll just finish with that there because that's uh, pretty much all that was going on with them uh, yeah so no good no good well, I had, a, I had a, a, a friend ring me today and say have you ever heard of Beam It the app Beam It no I've never heard of it what is it it's like a beam it.com.au you can kind of send money to your friends and whatever just right. a phone number or an email it's just you know it's, you just you hook it up with your bank and and that's it. How do you spell? Apparently, that's simple. I've got Beam 
Beam dot com. Beam it dot com. Yeah. Hang on, I'll show you yeah, what I got. Had a friend ring me today and say that he'd received requests to Not approve right. connecting Beam it to his account. I'm like, and he didn't initiate them. I thought you might have heard of it. So no. he rang the bank, and the bank said, "Oh, don't worry, it's probably someone's just put in the wrong phone number or something." Beam it app. Well, I think it's called Beam it dot com dot no, Beam it dot com dot is the website. Yeah. Oh no, it's app dot Beam it. No, because I just went there. It wasn't there. Beam it dot. Oh, it's it's spelt. Yeah, so it's spelt the uneducated way. That's right. it. <laughs> so I was, I was typing in the educated with Beam. Oh, I thought you might have heard of it. I thought I'd no, ask you. So no. You heard of it. It's like a so you can connect your phone to your bank account, and it works with all bank accounts. And then you you can just send each other money. So if you want to send someone fifty bucks or whatever, you just beam them fifty bucks. And right. Then it is, but. Or, so how much, I guess? How much does it cost? Here we go. Yes, yeah, what does it cost? There's always a cost. A but big... It seems like a pretty easy way to send money, but I just thought it was interesting that my friend said he was... Actually, it was my brother, actually. My brother said he... Um, someone initiated it, and he didn't. Hmm, a big bucket of nothing. It costs. Don't worry. Whether it's for a sneaky trip with your mates or splitting brunch... Oh, brunch with your nan. You'll never have an unexpected fee or charge from us. Beam is completely free to download and use. Your bank may charge a fee. Right. Maybe. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Any excuse to get a fee in there. We're joint venture that's owned by the Commonwealth Bank and the National Bank and Westpac. Yep. So there you go. Yeah. It's a, it's a new thing, yeah. But I right. just wanted, I thought it was interesting that he got that. I think it kind of alarmed him. He's like, oh, I'm getting messages to approve this connection to my bank account. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well. He didn't initiate it, then he said he, he said he rang the bank and they said, oh, don't worry about it. It's probably someone's just put in the wrong phone number. But he received it twice. Now, is it uh, instant? Where's, I don't know. I didn't do much research. Where's my facts? I was asking you if you knew anything about it. No. I know I've seen the things come up. You know, you give your kids these debit cards. You know, they're going, oh, replace the cash and take the school, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know, look, A, I want, I want my kids to learn how to use cash, so that's A. And B, the, they charge you a fee for the debit card. So you give the kids some money, pocket money or whatever, and 2%, 3% gets sucked up in a fee and stuff. Yeah, so you're talking like, uh, you know, like your load and go postcards and things like that. Yeah, something like that. They come out with, you know, a picture of Wonder Woman and Superman on it. You know, yeah. so all the kids go, woo. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So they can hook it up to their Fortnite account, can't they? So they can add their oh, V-Bucks. Oh, maybe. I don't know. You but, can't stick cash in your PlayStation when you run out of V-Bucks. No. Did you see that video I posted today on the Aussie Tech Ed's Facebook? Uh, this guy, Dan, he's, he's a little uh, little computer dude on the Gold Coast here. He, uh, the lady's printer didn't work, and she said she lost all her money in it. And so he got it and opened it all up, and there was 600 bucks in it. It jammed it all in. She put her rent money in the paper paper tray. And then she must have went to print something, and it's just sucked in the the, pa- the money with the like top sheet of paper and just jammed everything. So he's opened it up, and there's all these little wad of fifties in there. It's all right. Nice. Yeah. Fancy printer. Yeah. I, w- I would have said, geez, I think a, f- a few got lost with uh, they got laserized or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can't get all that back, surely, can you? No. Yeah. Well, I suppose. Yeah. Well, oh, look, he's highly ethical, old Dan. Maybe she thought she was had the license for printing her own money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wouldn't that be? Yeah, wouldn't that be good? You, you start the print, and then it just started spitting them out. You yeah. go, hey, <laughs> you're showing your mates. Look at this, I can print my own money. I'm going That's to put right. it in there first, but look, I can print it. <laughs> That's like that uh, video on Facebook. You know, they they the, the guys come around and they they put kegs of beer in the t- tap house of the taps of. In the pipes yeah, of the house. The so when you pour yourself a yeah. glass of water, you get beer. Now that's the go. Yeah, so his mate, the mate comes home and he goes to the kitchen, the beer comes out and he's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, all right. Yeah, did you get in the shower? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> you have a beer shower. Have a beer shower. Oh, that's how good is that? Have quite, quite yeah. frothy. What? <laughs> you wouldn't get any foaming suds. You'd get enough froth from that. Oh, you'd be a bit sticky, wouldn't you, after that? You know, you bit sticky. You have to know a good plumber. It'd, but, it'd smell like an old style pub the morning after, wouldn't you? Oh, I reckon so. Yeah. You always. Hey, you know. Um, speaking of Fortnite, mm. you know they reckon Minecraft has um, outdone, outdone Fortnite. I know it's back. Minecraft's it's back. back. I know. Minecraft is back. All my kids are like Minecraft, Dad. Minecraft. Yep. yep. So why has it come back? Like I, I don't know. 
Yeah, probably. Something must have happened. Given it a boost or done something to it, but they reckon it's it's back. Well, they, there they you go. Are getting sick of. Well, yeah, mm. not. yeah, well, I know because my kids are, they, they've got back into it, and uh, I went there, yeah, right? But I think Fortnite's still pretty high on the list, though. Um, oh yeah, it's just still be number two. Hmm. <laughs> Because there was one that looked like it was going to take over. Uh, it was another one sort of like that, but, uh, yeah, that, that didn't really take in this house. What was that, that, that bug one or bug or bu- bugger or something? Or boot? Oh. No, I don't know. Bung, bung, gug, bug or something? Or gug, bug? No, I don't something know. There's <laughs> but, another one that everyone's playing. Mm, but, um, yeah, well, it must be a, a phenomenon. Ray's in the Facebook lounge, and he's saying his son's dropped the Fortnite as well. So he'll drop, be back. Drop, They'll drop come back. Fortnite. Minecraft or just drop Fortnite? Yeah, oh, I doesn't say, but uh, but yeah, so that's the go, eh? Why would you drop Fortnite? That's, that's not a bad game, but I suppose like anything, you'd sick of it after a while, wouldn't you? Like yeah, just doing you doing the same I thing. Mean, I, was at, I was at the um, the shops today with with um, my boy. We're up at JB looking at the switches. He's been nagging it like crazy because I think because the switch will play Fortnite, and there's a new mm. switch that's come out, so the older one's gotten cheaper or something. Yeah, right. And I'm right. looking at all the old games on the the, the, the Switch, and I'm thinking this is awesome. Mm. All those old graphic games like Minecraft and and uh, Crash Bandicoot, oh. and yeah, yeah. all these awesome old games. I remember Donkey Kong and everything. I'm thinking, gee, whiz, maybe we should go and buy one. So I tell you, oh, a few months ago now, my brother had an Atari, one of those yeah. twenty six or whatever it was, twenty six hundred sitting in the. That's the only way I thought. Well, let's just hook this up, eh? So I hooked it all up, and oh, yeah, the graphics were pretty bad. The the, the game, uh, pretty bad and pretty much unplayable. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. Yeah, and I yeah. thought, oh, yeah. You can't believe how that used to just be the, the king of... Oh, I remember. I had an Atari when I was a kid. Yep. Yep, and that was just the, the duck's guts, they, wasn't it? They were, the, they were the bomb, yeah. Yeah, it was the they duck's guts. Get around, us kids for hours. Yes, yeah, oh, that's... Remember. Fighting over whose turns next. Yep, yep. You do. Yep, that's right. And yeah, going through it all again <laughs> right now. The hours I spent on Crash Bandicoot, though, I, I don't think I'd count. Here I am complaining about my boy on, you know, Minecraft and Fortnite mm. things, and the hours I reckon I spent on Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, well, I think what, when I first got I'm my. Get those hours back. <laughs> <laughs> when I got my Apple IIc, I think yep. I, I put a few hours into a thing called Sammy Lightfoot. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sammy Lightfoot, oh, Load Runner. That was pretty good, oh. and uh, Wolfenstein. Yeah. yeah, Wolfenstein. Yeah. What was that? What was that one? The, the swing on the vines. Was it pit pit uh, pitfall? Was it? I used to swing over the, the crocodiles in the pits with the. Oh yeah, pitfall. Yes, pitfall. yes, that's right. I love that too. That was yeah. That was that was an arcade game as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, what other? Have you got the? Uh, I remember watching a Van Damme movie. What was the? What was the Van Damme movie where he comes in and he's at the start of the movie? Oh, don't ask me about movies. And he was he was playing a video game. He, he was about to go and have competition fighting, you know, underground competition fighting. And he was playing a, a penny machine against one of the guys he was about to fight. Right. He was playing like a fighting game. I think it was Street Fighter or something. Like that. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yes, yeah, maybe, yep. Yeah, look, there's heaps of good games. Like I still like the old ones. I like the old arcade ones, uh, Ladybug. And yep. you know, I got Dig Dug on the Xbox. Pretty getting pretty good at that now. Uh, what else? I got the Xbox. I got uh, Rally X and Galaga. That's right. I used to like all those ones, but I can't yeah, can't get Ladybug on the Xbox though. And I haven't played Ladybug for ages. My brother's got one of the the, the old sit down ones. Oh like yes, on the table. Yep. And I don't know. Whether, I don't know what computer it's got in it, but it's got so many games in there. Just all like I think they. Yeah, I think they've got, like, say, the original, or well, sort of the original uh, componentry, but the motherboard, I think, someone's developed whatever way to put all the ROMs into it. So yeah, all the ROMs are there. You mm. open it up and there's just hundreds of ROMs to choose from. Yeah. You sit in bed for hours with a beer and, a, and, a, and just sit there and just Mist- chew away at these old school Mr. Games, D- unreal. Mr. Do, you know, yeah. all the good stuff. <laughs> like playing the original Donkey Kong, you know, with the sticks. Yep, the yep. Awesome. Pengo. Good. Good times. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Galaxian, yeah, all the good stuff. Um, yeah, what what news have you got this week, Jordan? Well, I thought you'd have plenty of stories. You put oh, spot, okay. Well, oh, no, that's right. I can keep going. My oh. screen's just turned off. I can have a look. I had one. Well, I can keep going. You you look for that. I'll... 
things big. What did I have? Uh... I'll keep going. Oh, you, so, well, I was talking to you about uh, you know data sharing and all that sort of stuff. So, my other little, my other little one here is that the ACCC has targeted Health Engine over data sharing. So, Health Engine is an app on your phone where you can you know you load her up and book it, an appointment with your doctor. So, the ACCC has said that Health Engine passed on patient information, including name, phone number, email address, date or and year of birth, appointment time, type of healthcare practice a booking was made with, and whether or not an individual had private health insurance. So, they were, oh, I know, they're passing on everything. So, well, I've got a, got a graphic here for those on the videos. So, the Health Engine received fees for referring some 135,000 patients to brokers between April 14 and June 18. The ACCC has also accused the services of manipulating patient reviews of health services. So um, that's a good old trick, isn't it? So yeah, they've got all these reviews. Apparently they got uh, the company selectively published 50,000 out of about 128. So 70,000 obviously gave them the finger and they didn't publish them. So they're in trouble for that as well. I don't know if you could actually get in trouble for fake reviews, can you? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe when anything to do with hell is pretty touchy. But but yeah, so that's no good. That's another breach of privacy. There's plenty you of know? it, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't there, I should say. I saw another one today. I, I can't remember what it was, but I think it was related to Instagram or something. And one of the news companies stealing more information from Instagram than Instagram even knew about. Or something along those lines. It's just so common. Mm. I think people just need to be more careful in their own habits. Yeah, it's going to be the only way to win. But I guess, like, like some most of the time, you probably don't mind. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you, know, you don't probably mind information getting shared around. I guess to a certain extent. But I, I guess when it can be used against you, like you know, if the, if the health engine shared it, you know, with all the the private health companies or whatever. And then you know you've put in a, a claim form. You might they might have said, "Have you gone to the doctor?" And you go, "No." And they go, "Oh, ha, ha. <laughs> you know? it's very. If, if the information they're sharing is more personal than it should be, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's. But, you know, there's not enough. There's not enough punishment. I don't reckon for the people who are stealing it, you know, and, and misusing it. Mm. Yeah, the, the punishment's not fitting the crime, obviously, because otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, we've got to make it more, uh, more uh, black and white, or more in your face that that's exactly what's going to happen. So, um, yeah, but oh, look, I'll still use the health engine. What are you going to do? I don't tell lies on Mondays, so that's all right. And Thursdays. <laughs> Oh, Mondays and Thursdays. I yeah. remember that. At least we know you're honest on a Thursday night. That's right. I'm straight up, straight up and down on a Thursday. <laughs> you know, Google. Speaking of big, big companies like that, Google just uh, Google Assistant just quietly added a great new text messaging feature that nobody even knew about it. What is it? So not, not every update to Google software is uh, is a game changer, but some relatively small additions often end up being becoming big fan favorites, such as an addition with a potential to excite some users. Uh, Google has now oh, I've jumped ahead of myself. Sorry, Google Assistant can now read messages out loud from major third-party apps. Oh, all right. Previously, could only read SMS messages and would skip every uh, other unread message. Well, this is no longer the case, according to Android Police. Some of the apps with access uh, to the features include Slack and WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp and Telegram. Blah 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 blah. So basically. It says if you want to test the feature yourself, grab your Android device and say, read my messages to Google Assistant and it'll ask for permission, blah, blah, blah. And then the way it'll go, it'll read your, read your notifications out for you from your phone and you can respond um, to those notifications and those messages as well. I'm not, I don't get excited with the Google Assistant. Like, she's, no. some, oh, she's hard to control sometimes. Yeah, she she's. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I was going to say something. I better not get in trouble. Yeah, we're going to say something about, about uh, we, won't, we won't go there. It's all right. Yeah, no, it nearly it nearly came out, but I better not. Um, yes, might come back and bite you. Oh, we're all too PC these days. Um, yeah, the, uh, no, I tried it out today on my phone, but you know, and and I don't mind Google Assistant all on my phone at the moment. Every time I say, "Okay, Google," it never. There it goes. 
beat me at work <laughs> making a liar out of me on a Thursday night. Yeah, I can't. And, and I can say to her, you know, read my messages, and it starts reading out my notifications in, from different apps like WhatsApp and. Right. Yeah. Now you mentioned Slack through the uh, that little new and story. Slack is on there as well. You love Slack. Oh look, I, t- I do, I do. <laughs> like, I've, and the reason I do like it is uh, like the the it's got web hooks, so like you can more and more. Uh, say like you know software or things that are on the internet more and more of these things you know they send alerts out to you well then you can hook your slack in so they come through the slack and uh, you know some of the things like say when say something happened on the server I say someone uh, reaches their bandwidth for example so then I'll get the slack message and I'll get that slack message maybe 30 seconds before I'll get the sms to say that there's a problem you know and I just thought oh it's pretty cool it's pretty cool so um, I like it there's only 30 seconds, I know, but yeah, no, yeah, I don't mind it. If, if you just got to go around, and if you can find enough of these places that you hook into, um, that you know, through, with your day to day work, uh, you know, so, um, yeah, look, you can't do it with banks or anything like that, you know, to say that your balance has uh, just been deposited a million dollars in or anything like that, but uh, you can do other things, uh. Uh, it's I, the same as Teams, isn't it, Microsoft Teams? And I've never used that either. I don't think I've ever used Slack or Teams, so I don't even really understand. Well, what yeah, what Slack, I guess, is... Yeah, it's just like yeah, you can create different rooms, say, for different businesses or for whatever reason, just different rooms, uh, and then uh, have different people that have subscribed or entered into the different rooms, and then you can chat. You know, you can open up a chat in uh, uh, Hot Sunday at the pub room. You know, and then yeah. you can start chatting with your mates on there, and then you know when you get back to seriousness, you go into the the, the wife's one, and go shopping list, and start chatting to her about the shopping list or so something. Private chat rooms, obviously. You can make them private. Yeah. Yeah, there are only people on there that you want. You know, let's have a look at it. Yeah, and uh, my, I saw, I read Microsoft Teams is going to replace Skype for business. So, you know, what's going on with Skype? Are they? Well, no, it is pretty confusing. I've noticed that with Microsoft. We've got Skype and we've got Skype for business. We've got OneDrive and we've got OneDrive for business. You know, we've got all these for business oh, yeah. variations of the applications and it kind of... Yeah, look, I had to renew... Stupid. I had to renew something with Microsoft. two OneNotes on my computer, you know, like one's yeah. the app and one's the... Mm. Yeah, the, the, yes, I know what you mean. I did the same. But yeah, I had to renew something through the week, like something to do with the, the part, Microsoft Partner Network. And... Email come through and said, "Oh, we're migrating everyone to the new platform." Blah blah blah. Let's click here, so I click there, get an error, and you know, the things that must be so damn complicated. I rang Microsoft up, and no one knows. And I was, and I think it took about three phone calls and probably about f- half hour, forty minutes on each call with them screen sharing uh, to work it all out. Like it's crazy. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, I sat down thinking the other day, why do they, Microsoft, make it so complicated? You know, why? obviously their back ends are so damn complicated that, you know, it's just rubbish. Yeah, it is. I've but, got friends who often say to me, you know, can you jump into our Microsoft account and fix up a few things? For mm, yeah, and I just thought well, maybe it's... A couple of hours to just, you know, mm-hmm. fiddle through everything and try and work out everything. It's just not laid out simply. Enough. No, well, at the end of the day, I just... I just come to the con- the hopeful conclusion that okay, it's slow. It's going through hundred thousand different security things, so it's never going to get hacked. So good, okay, I've good. Got a mate who works for a business who knows it really well, and I have to ring him up because I know he spent hours, if not months and days or whatever, sitting in the back end to get to know it. It's just crazy. Mm, yeah, that's right. Uh, look, uh, I've got another one here: lockable e-cigarettes. Hey. So yeah, <laughs> that's a bit nasty. I know, I, like I, do, I picked it up because I thought, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Like it's just technology is even you know coming to cigarettes, all the e-cigarettes. So it's called this Jewel J W L, must be a brand of it or something. The Jewel C one e-cigarette pairs with your Android smartphone to limit who can use it, as well as provide a way of monitoring how often the user vapes. Jewel said the C one. Jewel said the C one. Mm, is that his name as well? Oh, he knows. But anyway, this stupid e-cigarette could only be used if people got through age verification and face recognition checks. So there you go. If you if you if you do vaping and you're worried about, I don't know, the bloke next door put his lips on your on your e-fag, <laughs> then you can get your Android app out and lock it up. All right. 
Uh, what else have we got here? Well, Microsoft um, uh, scored another huge victory, uh, victory I've got here, it says, with another update this week, apparently. I think they've just... I think to kind of summarise the story so we can kind of keep moving, because I like how quick we're moving tonight. This is good. Um, it kind of just basically says that they've won over more cha- more Windows 7 users to um, Windows 10 this week, like a, a, a massive increase. People are starting to get the... Um, the the idea, the idea. That they need to move up to Windows 10 because Windows 7 support runs out in January. Well, it was all fear, probably. It's all fear because well, the, the Windows 7 guys are getting the pop ups. This is this is stopping. Oh, this are they is... now already. I haven't got a Windows yeah. 7 anywhere, so I wouldn't even know. Yeah, so that's why. But like, but Microsoft, you still, you, I think you still can do it for free if you know what you're doing. The upgrade, but like, yeah. So all these people now they're obviously paying for it. Can you do it for free still to 10? I think so. Well, they stop that. Um, I think, look, the last I heard, you could go through the, some accessibility way of doing it. If you Googled it, you'd be able to find the instructions. But it was something to do with some oh, accessibility, using the accessibility route, um, you know, like screen reading or whatever the hell it does to, to, install, it. to install it. And or, or, yeah, I don't know if you can just install it with the 7 key. You, you got to if you if you're keen you try it, you know. Yeah, you'd have to be that would obviously license it somehow. Y- yeah, did, I mean they offered it for ages. People were upgrading from Windows Seven. Yeah, well, well, let me just when they brought it out. Let me just have a quick Google upgrade Google. Win Seven to Win Ten. Well, I've got a couple of Win Seven machines. I'm thinking about just popping Win uh, Linux Mint on those ones. We don't I don't use them for anything, so they're only there. For a very very occasional use, so I figure why pay for it? Well, this is yeah. Well, this I'll throw a Linux Mint on there, and it'll be enough. This article was uh, October 2018, not that long ago. Well after the the uh, the supposed only, only a year ago. Yeah, but well, still well after the <laughs> the the free one was supposed to have stopped. Um, yep. Yeah, the access. Yeah, there it is. There's still a way to activate ten uh, key in addition to Microsoft accessibility offer. Yeah. I was always told that you just got to use the right update app, the, the you know the little updater. Mm-hmm. Someone said if you've got the old one, you can still do it, but I don't know if that's true or not. Oh, well, let's see if there's a let's go tools time. Let's go past what month. See if anyone's blogged about it in the past. Upgrade to ten. Oh, that's Microsoft support. Even in 2019, Windows Seven for free. Yeah, upgrade such as seven. An upgrade can take place on an existing device, so Microsoft recommends using that. An update ensures the most recent features. Blah blah blah. Da, da, da. Free upgrade. Uh, end of July 29, thousand and sixteen. But I'm pretty sure. Look, Google it, and it's got Google accessibility. It's got something to do with accessibility, and you something else to do that. I've never done it that way. Or if you have got your time, just put your Windows seven key in when it asks for the ten key. Put the seven key in. See what happens. See what happens. Or your eight key. Can't hurt. It'll can't it? Say yes or no, won't it? If it says no, then you'll just back out of it and go back to where you were. Computer says no. That's right. When does a computer ever say no, Glenn? My so, computer never pops up and says to me, "No, you can't." No, but it says no, mine says no in different ways. <laughs> does it? Yes, it's, it gets a bit. It gets a bit hasty, does it? No, it just doesn't do what you want. You go, you know, it just just doesn't do what you want. Uh, Uses. <laughs> I, mm, I translate its stubbornness into no. Uh, Apple is bringing out a credit card, as we all know. Rolls but, out today. Is it rollout today? Is that right? I don't know. It's soon. I think uh, this week, soon. Yes. Today, this week, yesterday, whatever. Uh, The Apple Card Customer Agreement said that the card cannot be used to purchase cash advances. I like that. Purchase a cash advance. Or cash equivalents that include cryptocurrencies. So there, there's uh, there's one for you. I, I didn't know that'd be a, a problem, but I guess it's another form of currency. So maybe you could align it down the same path as a cash advance, because you can't bu- use it to buy casino gaming chips. You can't use it as the, at the racetrack, or you can't buy lottery tickets with it. So yeah, so, doesn't the, doesn't the Centrelink card work the same way? <laughs> oh, well, who knows? You can't buy booze with it or something. Yeah, well, it was going to. Hmm. Maybe Apple stole that idea. Do you like the look of that card? It does look pretty flashy, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's plain. It's for those on the uh, audio. It's just plain white. Got the smart chip in it. 
It's got your name on it, and obviously it might have the the number. I don't know. This photo here, I've just got the name, the chip, and the Apple logo in the top left. So who Very knows? Fiery day. No numbers. Maybe Nothing. no. So you, do you need numbers these days? No. Well, no one uses the embossing machine. What do they call it? the embossing machine or the, no, the impressing? When you're online impress- and you're trying to purchase something, you got to put a number in. So what do you do? You can't use that card when you want to purchase something online. You know, like, I mean, we'd use PayPal or something. Or well, something. any any good Apple uh, lover, uh, fanboy, would have the Apple Pay on the phone, which you could use on the online checkout. Unless there's, they give you the number in the phone. So if you, you know, like how many... I, mean, I often pay for things with a credit card online. Oh, yeah, so do I. Mm. You know, even just getting on and topping up my account with, with you know, CityLink or... Mm. Vectors, it's called now. I've got to get on and put my card number in. So what happens in that situation? Yeah, you well... Put on your phone or something. Must do. I don't know. Don't know. Um, did you have any more over I your? Just Apple, and everybody will accept that, that, that that's the way it is. Well, that's right. Apple uh, just yeah. they, they tell you what you want. They tell you what you they think. They tell you what you think you want. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> um, yes, so no, you're right. It's one hundred percent. It's Apple, man. You can't get wrong. Mm. So. Uh, my yeah, my story was that one, and I think I've I've only got a couple of stories. Are pretty uh, pretty scarce the stories on the um, internet today. They were. I know that LG's ch- teasing a new foldable phone for September. Right. Uh, looks like LG's showing off a new foldable phone device at the IFA or IFA two thousand and nineteen, uh, and it'll have a small front display as well on the front. So that sounds like it's going to be a little bit like the. The Samsung hasn't that got a little screen on the front? Samsung mm. Galaxy Fold, I think it's called, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I'm just on look. Know much about these foldable phones? No, you? I'm not. I'm not into the phones too much. I'm just trying to look for it now. This is the one here that you're you looking know, I'm at. I'm only here to bring up the ideas for you to tell me all about how great these things are and the knowledge you have, Glenn. You're supposed to be helping me out here. <laughs> well, look, the foldable phones. You don't have all the answers. I thought you did. The foldable phones won't take off because they'll crack. And uh, anything that you fold will break uh, over time. And why can't they just have a, a phone, maybe with a screen and a little projector? So if you're in the train, <laughs> so if you're in the train, I suppose you want it to project onto your wrist and everything as well, so you can, you know. Well, either well, why not on your wrist, or if you're in the train onto the person's back, or if you're in the dunny on the back on the back of the door. You know, I, I, I got a, I've got to disagree with you, Glenn. I, I reckon that a foldable phone. Would be awesome if it folds out to the same size as an iPad or something like that, and then mm. folds back up to a normal phone size. Then, yes, you know, I, I, you've just you've kind of killed two birds with one stone. You've got your your medium sized device and your small device in one. Well, the only thing that's a worry is that all these big companies like Apple can't sell an iPad and an iPhone. Well, I'm not saying that it wouldn't be. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not going to be. Wouldn't be an awesome product, but uh, like the the fold, it's going to just crease and crease and crease and snap. Why not just have it like the it's old like a piece of wire? You reckon? That's after a, after yeah. a time. Yeah. Just... Why not just have it like those old Coleco games, whatever the hell they're called? You know the ones that open up like that. You know, There's, they don't have to be all screen. You can still have the the spine, so you just got two screens. Oh, that's... Well, I think that's what this um, this LG one looks like in the picture. That's, yes, yes. Like, it looks like it's kind of two screens opening but sharing um, the same, obviously the same thing, but then mm. on the front it's got a little screen as well so you can leave it closed. Oh, yes, okay. Is this the, is this the little video? Let's have a quick look at this. Before... Oh, it works too. You can play the sound through there. Nice and loud. Yeah, it was loud. Do you want me to... I'll, I'll turn it down yeah, a bit. Turn... There you go. Well, is that the best game they can come up with? <laughs> in this day and age, are they serious? Put Donkey Kong on there, man. Come on. I oh, know. Are they are they serious or what? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, geez. And and it, Kong, well, come on. Or well, one of these old classic arcade games would have been better than that. Jeez. Yeah, I think. My, yeah, my my Apple CGA graphics color card was better than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, uh, all right, let's move it on. Uh, MBN Co. floats making changing plans or making the 100 down 40 up plan business only. So yeah, that, that'd suck, wouldn't it? So does that mean all us residentials that are already paying for the extra are going to get 
pull back on speed and money and yeah, you probably have to pay more. So yeah, so yeah, look at have to have an ABN number and register as a business before you can get the faster speed. Well, it's only been mooted. I don't they can do it. Oh, you know they'll do anything. ABN is considering repositioning the current 140 megabits residential broadband broadband product as business only. The proposal is contained within the current MBN wholesale price review and is a previously unknown extension of the company's future thinking. So Aussie Broadband offered a counter view. Good on them, Aussie Broadband. You can They can stick up for us. Uh, we believe there is still a reasonable segment of the residential market that wants the 40 megabit upstream speed. And you're speaking to two of them right here, right now, or listening to the two of us, particularly yeah. given the popularity of cloud applications for storing photos. Well, exactly. We would discourage MBN Co. from restricting this product solely to business. Yes, so would I. I would strongly and heartily discourage <laughs> because you want to be going faster, not slower. Not slower in this new day and age. That's know? right. And I mean, how are you going to upload those... Hundreds of gigs of backup to your, you know, your OneDrive and your, yeah, all those things while you're, you know, on now, slow internet. yeah, like. I don't know if I've told you guys before, but like, you know, I put the show up on YouTube each week and, you know, before, when I was on the cable internet, I was getting 90 down, well, no, actually about 115 down and then they just recently raised it to five up and it's still taking me an hour to an hour and 20 to upload the YouTube each week. So it was a, it was a set and forget job. You know, set and forget, come back in three hours. Well, an hour and a half job to upload it. So, have a guess. So now I've got the 40 up. Have a guess how long it takes to upload this hour YouTube video now. Uh, just have a wild guess. Now that you've got 40 up. Yeah. Oh, it'd be next to nothing. It's seven minutes. Yeah. Like seven from an hour. So from, what, 80 minutes down to seven minutes. I can watch it upload. <laughs> like the audio took maybe... 10, 15 minutes. I can't even write the show notes, copy and paste the show notes now, and the, the audio is just uploaded straight. It's so it's good. It's been like being on the old, you know, 56K modem back in the day, trying to oh. download one picture of some... Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, I might say dirty picture in the old days back then. It used to wait hours for it. Oh, I remember the 56Ks. What I think you could, oh, at a stretch, you get about 13 meg an hour out of them. <laughs> like... <laughs> I think that was about what I calculated. The longest wait for the nudist picture you can find, I tell you. It'd be all over by the time it downloaded, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> be gone. It's yeah, like, the connection along with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with, all the, with all the drop-offs. You, and, yeah. And you have to keep reconnecting. You're already in the shower. You're, you're gone. You're finished. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, that's what they're doing. Well, look, they're, they're, we're, we're breezing. We're breezing. Any more, Jordan? No, not from me, mate. All Only right. uh, a few topics I had written down, but I think we kind of got through those too. How about you? Um, how about you? Uh, you never told me how you were going with your own cloud. Have you got your your uh, Plex and everything working yet? Uh no, I do the Cody. So you put all your Plex stuff on the uh, the Open Media Vault <laughs> server, and then push all your movies over to your Cody from there. Or do you? Like, no, I just put I, all your photos and stuff on your computer and just pull them to Cody. Yes, so I just SMB into a network drive, and that sorts it out. Cody sorts it out from there. So does Cody then do all your metadata and all that stuff as well? As in, like for the pictures and covers yeah. and all that. Yeah. Goes out, gets it all, so it knows what the show is. Because it, uh, what Plex will do is do it for you on the server, and then it's always there, no matter whether you rebuild Cody or not. You don't have to re get all those pictures and stuff. E- I'm not sure, yeah, but that doesn't matter to me. Like, who cares? It's uh, but yeah, look, the Cody went good. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about it. Um, you yeah, got your users sorted as well. Yes, yes, that was just some setting that I had hadn't done you know i watched and, a video know, i'll tell you what i put on i put on 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 my open media vault which is not a plug-in but because it's just a debian based operating system it's really easy to just go out and do it um i installed nextcloud so you just install i installed nginx the, the little web server app yeah which is which is a plug-in for um for, for open media vault and i installed the mysql plugin as well 
and then I installed onto those plugins um, Nextcloud. Right, and that's great. It's like having your own your own OneDrive or your own mm. Dropbox, and then your kids, if you want to have user accounts rather than registering them user accounts in Open Media Vault, you register them user accounts within Nextcloud. Nextcloud. Mm. The app, they can have the app on the phone and auto upload their photos every time they take pictures and kind of yeah, right. Place properly. Right, right. You can dedicate how much space you want them to have, and then, mm. because they're using it as an app on their device. You know? Mm. I know, like um, you know, I got into the Blu-rays. You know, and so, <laughs> so you know, I'm in the Doctor Who. I'll, I'll tell you quick. Yeah, you know, I was banging on the other week about the library, about the uh, the local library and how good they are for DVDs. I'll show you. I'll show you a couple of DVDs I got. So a good one there. Love thy neighbour series two. <laughs> Where's this? From the local library. Oh, the local library. This, They've got DVDs. Yeah. Rent, rent them out here. Well, free. You hire. You you borrow. Them. Yeah. Doctor Who. Ah. Oh. Graham Kennedy. <laughs> You're not leaving your house for a while if you've got Doctor Who there. <laughs> Power of the Daleks. More more new release Doctor Who's. And uh, I had to have it just to complete the see- me series. <laughs> Didn't like it though. That was a that was the latest one. Yeah. You know, should well, ne- should never have been a woman. You know they've bought they've bought um from my favourite, they've bought Picard back. Oh, I know. Yes. I saw Star Trek, Star Trek uh, Picard, and they brought back. I think uh, Seven of Nine's going to be in it. Captain Riker's going to be in it. Or, Is that uh, Commander Riker? I should say. Oh, right. Um, there's a few of the old, um, the old stars from the old Star Trek uh, Voyager and and uh, Next Generation coming in as well. Right. Okay. Is that called fun. Star Trek Continuum or something? No, it's, no, it's, no, that's Star Trek. There's Star Trek Discovery, which is the new one. Right. That's Star Trek Picard or something. Oh, Picard. okay. Star Trek's Captain Picard. Because they're bringing back Captain Picard. Yeah, right. Warp you know, one. From, from, Engage. Uh, from X-Men. You know, the bald guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know who he is. I saw him interviewed on uh, Graham Norton, I think, and he said he was coming back. And, uh, He's coming back with just bringing just the, 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 the uh, preview looks really good. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know if you've noticed. Looks really good. Yeah, look, I didn't mind that. I, I watched. Uh, I watched the next gen. I didn't mind yeah. that. I sort of lost it in Deep Space Nine, um, but I don't know why. Like, I still like the shows, but I don't know just time. I guess I just just lost it. But you know, but by not watching all this stuff now, see, it gives me so much to watch when I can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you can't walk, you need to hook up and have a go at Discovery, the newer one. It's not bad. It's not every Star Trekkie's favourite, but it's better than no Star Trek at all. Mm. And the Orville is what people are talking about. Now, just quickly before we go, because we are... They love that. Oh, okay. Before we go, just... just fantastic with uh, Seth, Seth MacFarlane's... The, oh, yeah. One. And it, in it and produces it as well. And it's just, it's just, it's just cracker quality. It's good. It's really good. Good. Well, I'll keep an eye out for that. But I just wanted to say, as if you haven't noticed, because you would have if you've been there. But the Google images have changed. It's a, it's a, it's More just Doctor Who phone boxes. That's right. That's all you can get. You, you search for the Google images only shows Doctor yep. Who phone boxes now. That's it. That's it. You search for cupcakes. That's what you get. You search for you search for USB keys. That's what you get. You know what really annoys me about <laughs> Google images is that. Often, if you're not careful, they'll pull all your images from Instagram and Facebook and things like that over to it. And oh. when you do a Google search, uh, you can end up finding pictures of yourself in Google. Right. Have you ever tried that? Well, I suppose I'd, I don't know. Let me have a look. Nobody ever thinks to check that their Facebooks and their Instagrams aren't searchable or indexable in within, within Google. Let me have a look. Glenn... Goodman images. No, there's a few other chaps. Oh, there's that guy. That he was in. That's that's me in uh, Nashville. That's. <laughs> I watched that. Was I've good. Heard, I've heard people look up their names on Google and found found their pictures from Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, Facebook. right. I that that was on public display. Jeez, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just devil nobody. Especially if you've got, uh, you know, an obscure name. It's not, you know, your standard John Smith or Jane Doe. Let me, he- find it. Let me help Google out by putting Australia. Put Aussie tech heads. No. 
No. Uh, oh, you, I, I oh. thought you were famous, Glenn. I thought. Oh, I'm a Neville. Sure. Clink them in Aussie tech heads, all right. Surely this has got to bring something. No. Oh, it's got the logo. But maybe I've no, maybe there's no photo. There you, are, you just went past it. You and Jason, uh, who is it? You, Jason. Oh, here, yeah. Yeah. But that's the logo. That's the podcast thing. Eric. But yeah, other than that. No single shots. Nah. What do I come up with her for? You should have typed up, you know, what's the what's the matchmaking you know, Glenn Goodman matchmaking, you'd probably find heaps of them, wouldn't you? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I should have put Glenn Goodman. <laughs> I should have put Glenn Goodman stud. That's what's wrong. That's, stud muffin. <laughs> that's what's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there I am. Have oh, <laughs> <laughs> you put stud, it's come up with the four-legged horses, or uh, I should say they're all four-legged, but they're horses. Yeah. <laughs> Some are five. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. All right, good stuff. And now, look, yeah, Joe's missing this week. He's on holidays. Um, so, yeah, so he'll be away for quite a few weeks. So maybe about I'm seven or something. renovating his house or something. Something like that, yeah. Just painting, doing something. Uh, I don't know, maybe going to see a soccer game or something or other. But, yeah, hey, Joe, uh, come back soon. Hey, Joe. Yeah, so we'll be doing that. So, all right, good stuff. So thanks, Jordan. Thanks for coming in and uh, good to see you again. And we'll... Um, and we'll hopefully see you again next week. Just you and me next week again. Is Joe back or? No, no, he's away for like seven weeks. Oh, special yeah. guest time. Who can we bring in? Yeah, I have to have a hunt around. I think if so, there's anybody out there in Facebook land that wants to come on the show, they should email um, Glenn. Now's your chance. Now's yeah. your chance. We'll blood you. Uh, Glenn at AussieTechEds.com.au. Two's company, but three's a crowd. You know, let's bring the crowd. Mm. Bring the crowd. That's right. And we'll blood you like a stallion. So, yes. Yeah. All right, good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you, see you on the YouTubes. All right, cheers. Thanks, Jordan. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, later.